Hey guys, it's Mountain Walk, and today we're going to be talking about reanimating stuff. Isn't that sweet? Like, look at that. Look at that Animate Dead. Oh man, look at that beautiful beta art. If there's nothing I love more, is that. Well, I guess it's alpha. Well, it's literally alpha, but the card itself pictures of beta. But I love beta stuff. The, the weird corners in alpha always wonk, wonk me out. Actually, when I first started playing Magic, like that, you couldn't even play beta or excuse me, alpha cards because of the wonky corners because they more or less be marked. Um, but now that's not really an issue, you know, because of sleeves and stuff. But anyways, uh, I don't want to get too off topic, but look at these sweet animate thingies with the, the sweet animate skeletons and necromancer of some sort. I don't know. It's great, though. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're going to talk about Reanimator. It's a pretty sweet deck, if you ask me. So this deck is strong, baby. It's strong. It's strong. You don't even understand how strong it is. Look, it's basically... This is a legacy deck, but the uh, only thing we really, really don't got is uh, Gristle Branded and Tomb. Those are the big ones. No Grizzle Brand, so you don't have, like, your all-purpose, like, this is the only creature I need to reanimate thing, because it's, it's just a ridiculous card. Uh, I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't talk too much about how ridiculous Grizzle Brand is. I don't think I need to tell you guys, Grizzle Brand's a, it's a good creature. Um, same thing with Entomb. Uh, we could have Entomb, but we don't, because this deck's already pretty strong. Uh, I don't think it needs to be any better. Um... But yeah, it was it was printed in Odyssey, so I guess Entomb is possible. It's one of those cards that possibly we could, you know, have or something. But um, sticks strong enough. Doesn't really need need much help, I don't believe. And this this is the deck. This is the deck why every other deck basically always has crypts. I mean, Tormund's Crypt has a lot of applications out, uh, in other places, but this is this is the big one it's to basically shut off. Uh, the, the reanimator deck before it can even get started. So you go first, you can play your land, drop your crypt, and that's it. There you go. You don't have to worry about it. So unless they can deal with it, um, they're they're gonna be gonna be shut out. So this that's this is I mean this deck is is big big business big deal because uh, it's fast it's real fast you know thank thankfully we do have a uh, Tormod's crypt in the format. Um, because, yeah, it was reprinted in Chronicles. So, uh, it's it's real nice. Real nice. It makes this, this decks like these bearable. There's a lot of graveyard abuse and stuff. So, Crypt is real nice inclusion to have. But, yeah, this deck's fast. Obviously, we got Rituals and Lotus Petals and crap like that. And free spells. and So, we're just, like, slamming super cheap stuff and the other super cheap stuff and the big fatties. And it's ridiculous. Um, this deck is really fast, which is why why I like it so much. I mean, it's easy to play too, uh, for the most part. So nothing nothing too wonky there. That's good. And so here's what it looks like. Uh, though all pretty much, I mean, this this deck is again a lot of these decks are more or less solidified. There's not a lot of change in anything you can really do. Um, about the only thing that we can really do here is maybe change up some of the discard a little bit, whether you want, you know, how many numbers of Unmask or maybe some Duress main. Um, but and then some of the fatties, you know, well, they can move them around here or there or whatnot. Um, but, yeah, there's not, not much to, to really, really want. They can really change. Um, so, yeah, I won't talk too much about that, but the, I guess just the why I chose whatever I chose. So the Phantom Shoba, again, just basically pre-boarding for uh, aggressive decks. Just slam it down. And, of course, it's really, really nice because it, you know, it uh, more or less negates the um, drawback of, of uh, reanimate because, that you know, you gain all the life. And that's really nice. Um, Verdant Force, uh, again, really good against aggressive decks and, of course, control decks, too. And, of course, it's really, really good against uh, Edict effects. Um, as long as, you know, you have... Because it makes a token every upkeep. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, Symbiotic Worm, again, also really good against Edict effects. Kind of like Burden Force 5 through 6, in a way. Um, both suck versus, uh, like, something like Plow or whatever. 
Um, and, and obviously, uh, if Verdant Force is in play for a couple more turns, it, it'll leave you with more guys if it gets plowed eventually. So um, I like Verdant Force a little bit more. And, of course, Petrodon. Petrodon is kind of like a pet card for me, but it w was actually used quite a bit in like the old uh, reanimator decks from uh, in Standard. They, they played them, um, the ones from like uh, Odyssey Onslaught Type 2. Um, so that was pretty sweet. And those decks also played Burning Wish. That might be something to look into as well. Um, makes the mana base a little bit more... Puts a little bit more stress on the mana base. Uh, but Burning Wish is obviously a very, very powerful card. Uh, and that's sweet. Um, but, speaking of the mana base... Um, well, no, hang on. I should go back to the Petrodon. I'll go back to Petrodon, because I love Petrodon. I just got a bunch of Petrodons. I got them, and they're all foil. I love it. Petrodon is great. I, dude, I freaking love Petrodon. It is a nightmare beast. It is in my nightmares. I, I'm just kidding. It's not in my nightmares. It's in my dreams, because I love Petrodon. Petrodon is the shit. Look, it, it's it's a giant fatty. It fire breathes, and it steals your lands until you can kill it. But you can't kill it, because it stole your lands. Oh, my God, you're so fucked. Like, Petrodon is shit. I love the art. I love everything about it. I love how just fucking janky it is. Um, but it's actually pretty sweet against uh, combo decks and control decks and all those kinds of stuff. Anything that wants to cast expensive spells, Petrodon is the shit. Um, okay, so let's talk about the mana. Mana base has actually been really, really good for me, at least just uh, at least in regards to gold fishing. Obviously, you're a little bit weak to wastelands and ports and stuff like that. But... Um, at least for a matter of producing the mana I need. I think there was like 1 in 20 games or something where it's like I had a careful study and couldn't cast it or something. Um, so yeah, mana base is pretty great. Uh, just a bunch of, bunch of stuff that produces different colors of mana. Uh, you got Ramp and Lotus Petal and Dark Ritual. I mean, it's it's sweet. Um, so yeah, that's, mana base is, is about as good as it gets, at least in regards to supporting all the colors you need to be in. That kind of thing and not dealing too much damage to you of course on the sideboard i'm a little more iffy about i don't know i'm not really sure i mean a lot of these cards i've played before in reanimator sideboards and things like that um negator is kind of just like classic like dark ritual combo deck like against other combo decks or control decks or whatever they'll just be like okay i'll just rid out negator and then protect it with like discard or whatever um that's a little bit easier it dodges graveyard hate obviously, uh, and yeah, it doesn't take much work to get into play, or even if you hard cast it, it's only three three mana. So that's that's pretty sweet. Um, I thought that might be kind of interesting here, to rest for more disruption, rushing river against all sorts of wonky crap. Um, Multani Maro Sorcerer is a, a good uh, reanimator target to, against like slower decks with a lot of spot removal, anything with source to plowshares, terminate, stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, Null Rod is anti-hate, or I guess Rushing River is too, but Norrod's specific anti-hate against um, Tormod script primarily, and then stuff like Frexian Furnace too. So, um, the sideboard's still a little unsure about, um, maybe maybe some sort of small Burning Wish package might be interesting to explore too. Get stuff like Sickening Dreams, that'd be pretty sweet. I mean, who doesn't love Sickening Dreams? That's a sweet card, that's a, that's a, nice, that's a nice sweeper and discard outlet. Or there's, uh, there's stuff like Firestorm. That's pretty cool. Although I think that's an instant, so you can't, you can't Burning Wish for that. You'd have to get Pyroglass. But there's all, all sorts of stuff you could play. Um, lots of good cards, too. Maybe stuff like uh, Pyroglass. That's pretty good. Um, but it, it's hard. Like I said, you don't really want to overboard too much because the deck is kind of like... You can't move too much stuff around because you need certain amounts of everything to, to make sure it's like, okay, I need a Reanimator guy... Uh, you know, like Reanimator Exhum or Animate Dead, they need something to to discard your fatty, and of course then you need the fatty, so I mean, yeah. So, well, we got no Chroma here. You're probably like, why do we have no Chroma here? Chroma is so strong. You're right, Chroma is really strong, um, but it still suffers from the same problem, getting plowed. It can't get terminated, which is nice. Um, but the problem is that it's it's not... It doesn't really combo very well with uh, Animate Dead. And Animate Dead, we kind of have to run. Um, you need a, a certain critical mass of these reanimation effects to be able to just draw them in your opening hand. 
Um, and that's the problem is this deck is very, very dependent on opening hand. And Careful Study does a little bit of fixing and it's very, very good in this deck. But you'll just draw draw hands and if it's just like, oh crap, the only reanimation guy I got is Chroma. And the only um, reanimation spell I got is Animate Dead. Like, it's it's a total nonbo because Chroma has Pro Black. So it just, uh, due to state-based effects, it, it just falls off. Um, so... Yeah, that's that's a problem. Or maybe it's due to maybe can even enchant it in the first place. Yeah, I think it can because it's in in the graveyard. But anyways, um, yeah, that that's a big problem. So if you have a situation like that pop up where you're like, okay, shit, I got like an animate dead in the chrome and this doesn't work, you're more often than not you're going to have to mull that, and you the deck will have to mull quite a bit anyways, just because it has very little card manipulation. So uh, increasing the number of mulligans you have is just not particularly good. I mean, and a Phantom Neshoba and a Chrome are pretty, pretty close uh, to being as like pretty close to being like super super comparable versus aggressive decks. Like the only thing is like if a Goblin deck got a really fast opening, they can shit out way more damage than you can um, gain back with. Uh, Phantom to show buff if you have no other blockers just due to pile driver and then being able to like poor chief into matron into so on and so on so yeah um so yeah other than that they're basically pretty pretty close to the same pretty close to the same uh so i would be like eh, you know let's just go with the phantom to show but he gains the extra life he's a little bit better um or quite a bit better versus the uh the sly decks of the world so if you get that guy out first turn, you can really more or less be assured that you're going to win unless they... Wow, well, now even if they drop like a, a Vortex third turn and you can't make them discard it, they're, they've already taken a bunch of damage. So a anyways, anyways, no Chroma because you don't really want to increase the, you know, the the uh, RNG on your opening hands where you just like, okay, so not only can I just draw bad stuff, I can just draw cards together that are just not synergistic, and so I have to throw that hand away, even if I have enough lands and stuff like that. That's not good. That's bad. Um, and so, yes, yeah, this, is, this is the other sort of leasing this other problem. The deck is a little bit linear. Well, okay, it's hyper linear. It only does one thing. Um, and so it's a little fragile, obviously, if it, you can attack them with the graveyard. There's all sorts of things to do that. Um, so you got to be careful. Uh, you got to be aware of what you're, you know, and obviously always try and lead off with discard spells to, um, you know, see if the coast is clear, that kind of thing, see what they're working with. And uh, especially like since you're so fast, like it's really good to know what you're playing with. So if you have your choice of reanimating stuff, you know, if, if they're like, you know, playing some control or board control deck, you're like, okay, I'll reanimate my uh, Petrodon instead of, you know, my Phantom Neshoba or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah. So the only problem is, yeah, it's a little fragile because you have to invest quite a few cards into these guys. And of course, no Gristle Brand means you don't get free Yawgmoth bargains every turn or whatever, you know, free draw sevens, just, ugh. So yeah, ultimately, ultimately though, that's, that's what makes this deck fair is that, uh, it doesn't have the legacy level of like, gonna go for bargain 90% of the time or the other 10% of the time I'll go for like Elish Norn or um or uh Iona or something just like yeah like okay yeah that's fair that's fair who even needs other creatures right like we just you don't even need to worry about power creep like this is impossible to get better than this Ugh. so yeah you're so fast you can steal a lot of games which is pretty nice um even though you are super linear, and that and then that's kind of the thing, though, is like that's what these the the draw to these super linear decks is that they, uh, you know, sometimes people just aren't equipped to fight you on the axes that you're operating on, and so you're and you're uh, probably the best combo deck in the format, um, at least that's in my opinion, at least the easiest to play, um, and even though it is a bit fragile and crypts are basically everywhere, um, you know, null rods can shut them down uh, after board and you got a lot of, got a lot of, um, discard, you know, uh, but I think it's probably the best combo deck because it's the easiest to play. The one that you'll probably do the best with, even though, you know, you can play bargain and you can play, you know, Academy Rector into bargain and another stuff like a Lurin, which will have a, a, uh, uh, one of the pre-modern deck decks coming up about Aluren. 
in weeks. I, I don't know, at <laughs> some point. But uh, yeah, this is this is probably the best combo deck in the format. I at least that I can think of at the moment. Hang on, maybe one one sec. Let me let me check let me check my phone. Let's see what kind of decks I have. Um, queued up here. I want to make stuff on. So let's see. Um, oh, do, would we count Tinker decks as like stuff? No, those aren't combo decks. I mean, those are basically pseudo prison board controly deck things. Okay, good point. I already talked myself out of it, so those aren't combo decks. Um, <laughs> let's see. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what you think of combo deck is, but yeah, this is probably like, yeah, probably the best one. I'm just gonna go with, I'm just gonna put it out there. It's the best one. Uh, I looked at my phone, and my phone agreed with me too. My phone said, "Hey, look at all these decks you made. This is probably the best one." I'm like, "Bam, you're right." I use a what's it called? I think it's called MTG Familiar. It's really good for like, like uh, saving deck lists and stuff, and looking up prices and all sorts of other stuff. It's really, really useful. Um, so use that MTG Familiar app. This, is, this isn't sponsored. I mean, no one knows who the hell I am, anyways. But use the MTG Familiar. This is great. It's a good. It's a great app. I was so happy when I found it. I was like, "This is awesome. I can keep all these things. I don't need." I have like tons and tons of papers and deck lists and everything else is really a lot more organized. But I came into the dig digital age. This is great. Anyways, it's gone on for too long. I've definitely gone on a tangent the last couple minutes. Um, but <sighs> drinking this beer this is good. Drinking Rolling Rock. Um, so in case you don't know, uh, Angry Video Game Nerds always drinks Rolling Rock. And that's why I always like Rolling Rock because I love Angry Video Game Nerd. So anyways... You should drink Rolling Rock. Gosh dang it. And you should play this deck. And you should reanimate like two Petrodons in a row. And then cackle with glee as you fire breathe all over their face. Like in some weird bukkake kind of nightmare beast way. This sounds a lot like hentai. But it's fine. It's fine. You can totally do this. This is not weird at all. Anyways guys. Thank you for stopping by. I'm glad you stopped by. I hope you're enjoying this content. I'm just plowing this stuff out because i am having so much fun just making these decks and and all this other stuff i'm get i'm trying to get through all of them all the decks in pre-modern but that's going to be tough there's quite a few but i think i'm plowing through most of them so anyways thank you thank you for stopping by guys and have a great day